I wanted a uh, Linux laptop, but I didn't want to pay lots of dollars. I wanted at least a powerful processor, a 1080 screen, at least 8 gigabytes of memory, and a SSD around 500 gigabytes. If you look here, the Inspiron 15 3000 has an i5, good powerful processor, Windows 10 Home, one terabyte hard drive, eight gigabytes memory for 400. Uh, it's on sale, but I was going to start looking at the uh, used market. So after looking, I decided upon the Lenovo ThinkPad W520. And this is the one that I happened to come across. This had 12 gigabytes of uh, memory, it had a 1080 screen, uh, quad-core i7 processor, that is what I think uh, 2.4 gigahertz, and uh, a slight uh, small plastic mi missing in the back of the charging port. So I ordered it, and it came, and it was uh, had Windows 7 on it. So what I did is... Uh, I decided, well, since it's uh, a spinning hard drive, I would go ahead and upgrade Windows 7 to Windows 10. First thing that uh, came to my attention was it did not have a internal Wi-Fi. And if you look on the item specifics, it does not say it has any Wi-Fi. But I had a TP-Link USB Wi-Fi uh, adapter and uh, I plugged that in but it couldn't find the driver so I had to take this down to the uh, router and hook it up with a Ethernet cable get the drivers for the TP-Link and then I was able to use the Wi-Fi. Once I got the Wi-Fi going I was able to take the uh, ThinkPad up to a uh, desk that I uh, then started to uh, proceed to upgrade to Windows 10. And you may ask, well, why are you doing that if you're making this a Linux uh, laptop? And I figured, well, since I've already got Windows 7 there on the SATA drive, why not go ahead and upgrade it to Windows 10 and I'll just make this a dual boot machine <coughs> with the uh, hard drive with Windows 10 and then the SSD with uh, the Linux. So I went and first thing I did was backed up the, uh, the disk using Redo Backup, which is a uh, disk-based uh, Linux type of uh, backup. Did that, plugged in a uh, USB 3 uh, one terabyte hard drive, backed it up, and then I discovered that Windows 7, the USB 3, was not working for some reason. And what you do then is you go to the Lenovo support and they have drivers and software for the W520 laptop. And so I downloaded this driver and all of a sudden the USB 3 was working. Then what you do is essentially create a uh, Windows 10 installation media disk and you I wanted the USB 3 to work because USB 2 was plugged into the TP link. I've got one USB 2 and two USB 3s and I had a USB 3 uh, flash drive stick so I plugged it into the stick, put it in and upgraded like uh, this uh, YouTube video uh, describes and then I also used this product, LARC Advisor, to get the uh, key. However, that key did not work. But as I was uh, messing around with the ThinkPad, tearing it apart and whatnot, I noticed that the, uh, there was a key that was different than what Bellark found underneath the battery compartment. Used that and I was uh, able to uh, officially upgrade to Windows 10. After that, I went ahead and uh, got a uh, SSD that I'd uh, bought and installed it. You can find SSDs for uh, pretty inexpensive nowadays. For example, the SanDisk with 113 uh, reviews and a 4-star rating only costs 60 bucks.
Installing a uh, SSD in place of the hard drive is uh, relatively easy, assuming you know what to do. I found uh, this uh, How to Fix It uh, YouTube video, and the one thing that I didn't realize is that this uh, metal mesh, that's the caddy. I took the SSD, put the two rubber uh, bumpers on it, and stuffed it in there. That worked, but everything was kind of uh, loose and floppy. So I had to redo it, <coughs> take out the uh, hard drive, and uh, put in the SSD drive. And I shoved it in there. And uh, what I found is you have to be somewhat careful with uh, going ahead and making sure it plugs into the uh, plugins. Otherwise, nothing happens. So I had to do this, plugged it in twice, and after that it worked. One thing I found with the memory was it uh, had a 8 gigabyte uh, DIMM in uh, this area, and then under the uh, keyboard it had a 4 gigabyte DIMM in the uh, top slot. And this is uh, how you do the keyboard removal for RAM memory upgrade. It's uh, relatively easy. These two screws here are long and they will fall out when you turn over the uh, laptop. What I found here was that uh, this is what they recommend to the uh, community. One guy said that uh, for systems with two memory DIMMs installed, place the largest memory DIMM into DIMM slot 0. This is the keyboard side. This is slot 0, the top one. So they had one in slot 0 and slot 3. 4 gigabytes here and 8 gigabytes here. What's supposed to happen is the 8 gigabyte should have been here and the 4 gigabyte should have been here. So I did that and uh, when I slipped in the uh, 8 gigabyte in slot 0, everything worked, but when I tried to slip in the 4 gigabyte in slot 1, it didn't seem to want to go. I was uh, kind of concerned until I went back to slot 0, pulled the uh, 8 gigabyte, and then tried to insert it again. Found out that uh, you have to have uh, way more force than I thought was necessary to put it in. So I was able to get the 8 gigabytes in slot 0 and the 4 gigabyte in slot 1. Next in the process is uh, use Etcher to uh, take the ISO file for Linux Mint 19 and put it on a USB 3 drive. Essentially this uh, shows how to do it. I had a desktop that I had already downloaded the 19 ISO and uh, the reason I had done that before I bought the the Lenovo is I have a Dell Inspiron 15 that I bought in 2011 and it turns out that uh, Dell and Linux are not exactly compatible. Now I have on that laptop I have dual boot. I tried uh, to put on Linux Mint onto it from I think it was like 17 and I had to go back to 18.3 to get it to work. So I figured that the ThinkPad was more powerful. It has an i7 versus an i3. I can put in a uh, SSD easily versus you have to take the uh, Dell completely apart and good luck on getting it back together. This ThinkPad is designed to come apart to replace uh, the memory and the SSD. So I did that and uh, got the image on a uh, SSD. So <clears throat> once the uh, flash disk was fixed up, I inserted it into the ThinkPad USB 3 port, rebooted, and uh, as it was rebooting, you have to click on the uh, blue Think Vantage button to get it to boot from the USB. Once you did that, it's uh, easy enough to uh, go ahead and, well, you can uh, check to see if uh, it'll work first from the USB port and then install it. And if you follow uh, the very many uh, YouTube videos or just follow the instructions, 
it'll be uh, uh, easy to install. And finally, I wanted to get the uh, fingerprint scanner, which this uh, ThinkPad has, working. And to do that, I just went to uh, this uh, website, followed the instructions, and uh, it just worked. So I'm uh, pretty happy with uh, the ThinkPad at this moment. And uh, now <clears throat> I don't do gaming, so this is not a gaming machine. And I really uh, don't need something portable. I use my tablets for that. So this is uh, something that you, I think will uh, work for me. The uh, next thing I'm going to do is uh, put the hard drive into a uh, this uh, ThinkPad uh, Caddy and uh, take out the uh, optical drive and put that in and uh, try to dual boot this thing. And if it's uh, successful, I may make another video about it. That's it for now.